Hello and welcome back, G-Man here, coming to you from my studio slash lab for another new product review, the new Erica Synth Sample Drum Eurorack Module. The Sample Drum is described as an easy to use, two voice, modular sample player designed with percussion and loops in mind. Even though it has the word drum in the name, notice the phrase with loops in mind. So yeah, it will mangle musical loops as well. So to be clear, don't expect any pristine layered piano multi-samples here. It's not an instrument sample playback module as much as it is a loop playback module. So how does the sample drum perform as a loop playback sampler? Can it be as crunchy as your Akai's or Emu's? Let's see. Right out of the box, you'll notice a two-tier PCB construction. The power header is mounted on the inner board to help reduce overall module depth, which should make it boat and skiff friendly. The white graphics on black panel are really well laid out, keeping the CV jacks out of the way of the controls. There's a 20mm by 36mm OLED screen. The size works well to give plenty of information without the text being too small. The pushdown encoders are sturdy and make navigation easy. Since this sampler is two channel, we can think of it as two individual modules. Which channel we are editing is determined by a toggle switch. As with most samplers, the onboard RAM is volatile, meaning the samples will go away when you power down the module. So samples must be loaded each time you boot the module, from the easily accessible SD card slot on the front. The micro SD card is included with some factory techno sounds. There are individual trigger buttons for each channel. This really comes in handy when you're auditioning samples from the SD card, samples loaded in memory, and when editing sample slices, which I'll get to later. My module came with firmware 1.0, so I updated the firmware to the currently latest version 1.7. Updating firmware was painless using the SD card. Down at the bottom we have the signal jacks. There are two triggers in, one for each of the two channels, three assignable CV jacks per channel, and one audio output per channel. I really like the concept of the user interface. A main menu includes eight pages. Encoder A is used to navigate and select the page. The menu depth has been kept to a minimum, so it's an easy learning curve and fast to get around in the system and not lose your way. When you're in one of the subsections, the six encoders control data with respect to six parameters in the display. I am happy to report I have not encountered any glitches in the firmware while using the module after a few days. Controls have been responsive. I haven't noticed any hang-ups otherwise. The module only operates at 48 kilohertz sample rate at 16-bit. You can load wave samples at other sample rates, but the bit resolution must be 16-bit. And the module will play back your samples at 48 kilohertz when you load them in. Just remember the actual sample rate you recorded is what you will actually get in the end. As an experiment, I recorded one of the onboard drum loop samples into a Windows 10 free app called Ocean Auto, O-C-E-N Audio. I converted the file to different sample rates, then loaded each of them back into the sample drum. First, the original drum loop. Then, a new version at 22K sample rate. And again at 12K sample rate. That sounds pretty darn good to me. It's actually pretty crunchy. The sample I used at the beginning of this video was recorded in Ocean Audio. I used that app to create hit points, which were present as slice points when I loaded the sample into the module. The module also allows automatic sample slicing as well as manual slice placement. Manual can be a bit more tedious but more accurate timing. You can always use auto slice first, then go in and change the slices manually. Onto the envelopes, which control the amplitude of loops and slices. So think of them as VCAs controlling the volume over time. 
I love the envelope curves, which can be linear, log, or exponential. One thing to realize about the sample drum is it does not process its loops and slices using zero crossing. For me, this didn't prevent me from having immense fun with this module. So sometimes you'll have clicks and pops as the sample slices and loops change position during playback. One workaround I've been using is to add a small amount of attack time on the envelope page. If a looping and or slice crossfade feature were added in the future, that would be pretty sweet. On the subject of recording samples using the module, it does a decent job. Just know that recording can only be 12-bit due to the onboard analog to digital converters. I recorded something directly to the module. Here's what the original audio sounds like. And now the audio played back from the module. Let's listen to the same sample after it has been sliced. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Be sure to check in next week for part two of this review and to catch my final thoughts on the sample drone. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.